guys it's Pam today I'm going to take you along with a journal my journaling process creating a girl and the first thing I'm going to do is spritz some dilutions ink sprays over the stencil and I'll link all of those colors below and I'll usually take that stencil and put it on a clean page and kind of rub it off so I'm not wasting any ink smash that together so it transfers on the other side and I end up making the um, see there's some purple that was kind of left behind on there that reactivated which is fine I end up using that left page as a cleanup page but this is the Dana Wakely acrylic paints that one's magenta and it well this one I'm using now is blackberry blush or something like that and magenta and I'll take an old credit card or a gift card and just spread the colors around And once I get all of those just kind of smoothed out, I'll use some gesso. And my favorite gesso is De La Rowney gesso. And it has a blue label. It has to have the, well, the one I like has a blue label. And I put it in this squeeze bottle from the container store that has a nice snap lid on it. Um, it's super nice so you don't have to worry about keeping up with the lid. I'll just smooth all of that about. And then I'll take any of the excess and put it on the left page, which ends up, yep. I like the idea of doing that, using that as a cleanup page, because you, you get a um, two-for-one background page, kind of, sort of, which is what I'm creating right now is the background for my girl. Use the heat tool and dry it. And some spots that are a little bit thicker, I'll smush with my fingers. Just smooth it out, and I love that smooth texture your fingers give. This is a stamp I recently got from Hobby Lobby with some Ranger Archival Black Ink. I'm going to ink up the whole page. Well, stamp the whole page. Just to put some scripty text in the back, in the background. And I keep forgetting, I'm going to get used to using the other pages of background, but anywho, this one is a stamp that I carved out, just some circles. And the next stamp is just a circle stamp. This cling stamp I use a lot because it's easy to kind of match up those circles if you want to make a bigger, bigger um, section stamped like this part right here. Sorry about that. And this one is actually a stamp that was on clearance at Hobby Lobby, so I got it pretty cheap. I don't have a whole, whole lot of stamps, so um, I was tickled to get some little floral, floral stamps. And this stencil is a Faber-Castell stencil. I'm going to use that Liquitex white, I think it's titanium white paint. I'm going to pounce it through with a makeup sponge. <coughs> Although it looks like I'm stamping, kind of pouncing pretty hard, I'm not. That table is a drafting table with a glass top and it's wonky that way. And I'm going to put these white spots everywhere. I think it's a little dark and could use some lightening up. I'll, um, Put that stencil over that area. Once that's finished, I use that Dilutions. I think that's the peony blush color. I just take the top off and use that tube to kind of scratch some color on. Ended up that wasn't quite um, vibrant enough. I mean, it's vibrant. Don't get me wrong. I just didn't put enough on the page. So um, there, I spritzed it with water. Needed more. Wanted more color. Oh, look at that color. Ain't it pretty? But yeah. And right then, I think I grab a um, paper towel and start dabbing up color. And I'm like, what am I thinking? I got this remnants page on the other side. I'm going to just smoosh it and transfer it to the other side. And you'll have to tell me I put more. And when I smoosh it this next time, I saw a face as I was editing this. Um, my son was. I saw a face in there and I said, oh, I'm 
I'm going to make her come to life. So if you look on my Instagram page at so crazy, S E W C R A Z I, you'll you'll see that drawing maybe. And then I'll come in with a pencil and just do some loose line, some mark making. And that's titanium white, I do believe, liquid. It's the high flow golden high flow acrylics. Just splattered about and cleaning off my brush over there. And some of those bigger blobs, I'll end up using my finger and kind of making a little more marks. Just some more mark making. It's fun to get your hands dirty. Get that good and dry. And the next thing I do is put matte medium over it. And this is the gel, Liquitex gel matte medium. Um, I do that because the dilutions inks are... Um, water based so they will reactivate with water any liquid products although when I was putting this over it, it didn't really smudge a whole lot like it has on I think the paper makes a big difference as well but this will help you to be able to um, put some white and different color on top of it without reactivating that color this is a girl that I drew on um, sketchbook paper I didn't like her hair so I just cut it off Cut her out, and then I'm gonna matte medium her down. Matte medium's a verb. Did you know that? <laughs> but yeah, I'll put matte medium down, glue her. You can tell there's nothing that reactivates; it stays pretty clear. And just snip off any remnants if it's too big for your page. And the next thing I do is take a light color pencil. That one might be a HB, I'm not sure. But I'll lightly go around and kind of get the feel for how I want her hair to be. It's light enough that I can see it, but not so dark that it can't be erased and um, fixed if I don't like it. And I give her a little short curled bob. And I like to hold my pencil kind of far away gives a, a good loose loose line and once that's finished I go around everything and just kind of retrace it with my pencil and then use the blending stump to smooth it out so there's no little sketchy lines because I am a sketcher I don't do a whole lot of smooth line work I quite like the organic feel of sketchy lines Um, next thing I do, well, I forgot to use my blending stump, didn't I? I pulled out the colors and then noticed that. And I'll take that blending stump and create some shadows and just smooth out that line there. And these colors are core watercolors, which are some of my favorites. The high chroma set is my favorite. Um, it was the first core watercolor set that I got, and if you ever want a good one and don't want to spin a a whole lot of money you get a lot of bang for your buck because the colors that come in there you can mix and make a, a lot of colors once I get finished with this shading I go in with the um, what color is that yellow ochre and I leave the white of the page as the highlights on my face and I'll just use the yellow ochre to do the shading parts where I typically shade One thing about using watercolor over matte medium, <coughs> you have to kind of get used to how much pressure and how wet to get the brush because if you once you start layering on top of matte medium, if you use it too heavy or too much water, it lifts that other color super easy. So you just have to get a feel for that and keep practicing with it. And I still sometimes will lift too much of the color up. And this color is the Quinn Magenta, and a lot of times I'll do her cheek color right beneath her eye in like a um, triangular shape. I like the look it gives, and sometimes I'll do, do just a cheek a little lower. I'll almost always put some on the nose, and I'll use that same color in her lips, but just um, 
darker, more concentrated, less water. I do the lower lip a little bit lighter than the top, give it a little bit of dimension. I normally put some where I'm putting it now, right beneath the head, the chin, a little bit on her forehead. And I don't know if I did this off camera or maybe I didn't or maybe I forgot. I usually put some right above her eyelid um, as well. That color is uh, Burnt Sienna. And I use it just to darken up those shadow spots a little bit. I just don't put it down quite as um, far out as the other yellow ochre. This one's that dioxazine, I think is how you say it, purple. Super pretty color. I put it heavy in the more shaded spots and then pull the color out. I think I add a little bit of that clean magenta in there too, just to kind of pull it together. And that is the Payne's Gray, which I absolutely love for eye color. Don't know why, but I do. And I'll put a little bit of Payne's Gray in the shading areas as well, just to kind of, I like to, once I use one color, I like to put it kind of in three different spots to bring the page together. And that's where you have to be careful because I already got two colors down under her, between her head and her neck. And it'll start lifting really easy if you're not careful. Still using that Payne's Gray. <coughs> this is a half inch silver black velvet flat brush. I absolutely love their brushes. It doesn't mean you have to go out and buy them, but if you like watercolor, it's very well worth the investment. And I use that um, Payne's Gray all around her hair because I felt like it needed to be dark hair. A lot of times I'll use the background as the hair and just go around the hair, but she needed to pop off the page a little bit. Then I go in with the gesso and I start going around the whole her whole head and body. Now I'll pull it out with my fingers. And it looks like it's a little washed out around her neck, but you'll see how I make her um, pop back out a little bit with the pencil. I end up tracing everything again and I use a dark, even I go from lighter pencil to darker and at the very end when I'm finished I'll use the darkest one, either 4B or 6B. Um, and I'll darken her in and then use a blending stump to smooth it out and shade a little bit more and that really pulls her back off the page. And you can see around her neck it really comes back off of that white. And then I'll use, sometimes, a lot of times I'll put a border, not all the time, but she needed a border. So I just took my pencil, draw some lines, frame her in, do some little teeny flowers around the edges. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add some purple splatters with that same purple. The watercolors. Because that white was a little bright, I thought it needed to be pushed back a little bit. And dry it up. And then I come in with the jelly pen and put highlights or whiten the parts in her eyes, her nose, and her mouth. that needed it. And then I pull those flowers back out, those that are showing from the original stamps in the background. <coughs> Excuse me. And that kind of pulls them forward a little bit. I do believe I date my work and that will be it folks if you will um, comment below if you have any questions or video requests I'll be happy to oblige and I thank you for watching have a great day